How is everyone doing this fine evening? It's your boy, Sir Nevels. And uh, just give a little backstory. I am currently house sitting for a close friend of mine, his parents. I'm house sitting, so I'm currently not in my original setup, but I'm kind of a psychopath and I decided to bring my entire PC. Well, the person I'm house sitting, they already had a little computer desk in the corner. So I'm like, I mean, how hard is it to just pack up my PC and my monitor and just game out there? Because, I mean, if I didn't bring my stuff, I would be away from video games and, more importantly, Age of Empire for 10 days. And that is unacceptable. But the reason why I'm mentioning this, if you hear a dog bark in the background or maybe possibly whine, that is why. I do not own a dog in my place. But I am currently babysitting two pit bulls they're good pit bulls really good pit bulls uh we got jackson and coco they're in the back chilling i think coco right now is gnawing on a bone but uh anyway you know what it's been a, been a little bit since i just turned on this uh you know turn on the recording software and just talked you know just had some gameplay in the background just just wanted to exercise my you know speaking you know without saying uh or like i recognize that i i read that somewhere if you say uh and like a lot it's kind of like you know it's like filler words you know you don't know what to say so you kind of start saying uh and like you know i want to i want to get better at that so you know why not why not record something and you know make it relevant to the channel so for this video i just want to basically do an update on my current let me say do a little quick temperature check of Age of Empires 4 because uh me I think truly I have a lot of confidence in the game as an RTS you know uh me I'm very you know if I have not expressed before in my videos in the past I am very new to the RTS genre I was not around I don't think I was even really old enough dang near during the golden age of RTS. I mean, during like Starcraft 2, when like Starcraft Blue War, when like, what was that? I think maybe Warcraft, when like RTS was like the, the pinnacle of competitive gaming. And when, you know, you go to like, you know, you go to like South Korea and like RTS, it's like, you know, these dudes are like celebrities out there. I was not really around for that. I was a mouth breather playing FPS games and, you know, basic games. I'm just playing. If you play those games, they're awesome. They're great. But anyway, uh, so, you know, I'm kind of around during like, you know, RTS isn't dead, of course, but you know, it's just not, it's just not in the forefront. And I actually want to make a video in a future date on why I believe RTS is, you know, not as big as it used to be. It really kind of comes down to, you know, just real quick little I'll call like, you know, little cliff notes on what I believe why this game isn't as big as it could be or should be, in my opinion, because, you know, the barrier of entry is not very easy. You know, RTS games are to require a lot of time. They're not really appeal to casual audience. There's not really me. It's not like any microtransactions or there's really not, you know, there's nothing really like, you know, a lot of, you know, it's a very snack food gaming culture nowadays. You know, a lot of people want to kind of get in and get out. A lot of people don't have time. People, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on in their lives. And I understand that. They got work, families, you know, anything. Or kids, you know, even like young kids, you know, they got something that's way, they got way more digestible games than like, for example, uh, Age of Empire or Starcraft or something of that genre, which requires, you know, you, got, you know, you look at like, you know, look at why, I guess I'm going on a tangent, you know, there's no script here, so I'm going on a tangent. But if you look at what makes Age of Empire and RTS kind of appealing in general to me, is that it's like a get good game. It's a game that like you, the whole drive of the game is really to get good. You know, if last season you were bronze, Next season, you want to become silver and silver to gold. And then maybe one day you grind out gold and become platinum. And now you become platinum too. And now you're teetering on diamond. You finally hit diamond. Now you want to maintain diamond. And then shit, you want to just, you see conquer the very top rank, just way out of reach. And you just want to get there. And you could, it's crazy how, you know, these games, they're just, they're so competitive. And it's all about improving. And that becomes addicting. You know, uh, the other day, my uh, my girlfriend, she asked me, she was like, she seen me playing and she seen me kind of like, seemed like I was stressed. And she was like, um, like, is this game fun? And I looked at it, that was a good question. I was like, a good ass question. I was like, 
is this game fun? And I said, some aspects of the game are fun. Some aspects are. You know, like the game is not, like it's not, not fun. But I said, fun is not the word I would use for, I'm gonna say Age of Empires 4, cause that's the main one I play. But I said, Age of Empires 4 is not really, I wouldn't describe it as fun. I would describe it more so as satisfying. Like, and, and that satisfaction can become and evolve into fun. But, you know, when you play a lot and you know yourself getting better and you're doing better with build orders and you're, coming, you're playing more efficiently, you're faster and you're noticing the improvement, it's just something that releases inside you that just comes as very satisfying and addicting. And I believe that is really the selling point of really Age of Empires 4 and RTS in general. You see yourself getting better. That's why a lot of these RTS players, some of them like, you know, make money from coaching. And like when I explain that to like one of my friends about like, oh yeah, these dude, he pays like $25,000 to coach. This dude was like mind blown. He was like, coach and you will pay somebody money to teach you how to play the game? Like what can they teach you? Just play the game. And believe it or not, that's not always the case because a lot of these players teach a lot and you can actually learn a lot just from watching coaching videos and build orders and all that stuff. So the RTS is beautiful because it just requires, it's like a second job thing there. But I went completely off track that is not even why i'm here today basically yes the moral story what i was talking about yes rts is a hard barrier to entry but once you get past that barrier you start seeing how beautiful it is but yeah this video is really about checking up on the momentum of age of empires 4 how it's doing how things are you know how i feel they are what i feel they can improve on and you know just a little spoiler alert, i believe the game is trending upwards you know like you know player count and all that stuff like we're not going to take that in consideration we're going to talk about just the quality of the game itself you know because really you really like that's really the core aspect of the game a lot of people look at player count and all people are logging in every day and that's very important of course because that if, you know you want that to be high because that that you know if, you, if it's a like high high player count excuse me can't talk but if it's a high player count, that means that the game's gonna drive an audience. You know, and once it drives a big audience, then developers are gonna obviously support it more and get things out quicker. And it's gonna be, you know, it's always a good thing. It can be a good thing. Sometimes you got a super high player count, then some people like it, some people don't. Like, for example, like look at Call of Duty. Like, you know, Call of Duty is a super high player count, but most people complain about the game and say it's trash. Where Agent Empire is a little different. It's a lower player count, but most people love the game. It's very weird how RTS is compared to FPS. FPS is a way more lucrative and way more thriving, thriving, you know, just genre. But, you know, you got a high percentage of players who do not like the game. You go into, you see a player, you see a player streaming Call of Duty. I'm just going to call it an example. We see a player streaming Call of Duty. A lot of players in the chat, this game's trash, this game's this, this game's that, blah, blah, blah. And no one's really even responding to it. You go into an Age of Empires chat, and you're like, man, this game's fucking garbage. People be like, well, there's the door. Peace. Get out of here then. We don't need you around here anyway. Age of Empires is small, but it's like a more, it's a more dense community. It's very, a lot of support for the community in the game, which I feel like is very, you know, very good. You know, I mean, yeah, you can have the numbers, but, you know, how many people are really good for the community? where as far as now everyone wants the game to do well everyone wants the game to do well and you i will elaborate on that more later okay let's talk about the pros let's talk about the good things that are happening as far as age of empire i'm gonna start off with the pros always good to start off with the good things you know from the bad note of course start off with uh the new update uh so there's a, obviously a big update uh this is months back but a big update maybe months maybe a month or two i don't remember i can't think exactly but back you know a month uh you know the, the big update that came with season four uh, basically i'm not gonna go through it obviously but basically it was a landmark driven update where pretty much m a lot of landmarks in the game that were pretty much not used at all uh they received a buff that made them more viable in multiplayer and i, I every time i think about that the more i'm playing season four i just want to clap it up because it really did make landmarks that were never used by used 
like I mean, there's a lot of civilizations now. Some you kind of still go up with the same order of things, but a lot of civilizations now, you actually have a choice between both landmarks. When the game first released, you pretty much knew what your enemy was leveling up with because the landmark, it was one that was just super good and the other one that was either trash or meh. I believe the one civilization you could go up with like at who can really choose each landmark every time they leveled up was I believe the HRE. HRE pretty much had it's maybe not. The mine work palace is pretty trash at first. But at least their castle upgrade was really good between maybe not. You kinda went regnants. Yeah. So but okay. I I have an ADHD I have on tangents all the time. But but that's like that's good now because now a lot of see like a lot of civilizations you can choose both landmarks, you know, each time you level up. Like, for example, the Rus. The Rus had the best landmark for Feudal Age, the Golden Gate. It was excellent. It was like a completely improved, it was like a market on steroids. You couldn't trade with it, but you could, tr like, you could, you know, swap out resources and it was always at a favorable cost. Like, it was always great. You always profited. Best, in my opinion, it was the best landmark in the game, and I still think it's a great landmark. But they end up giving the one landmark, the other landmark in Future Age up, which was the Kremlin, which is like a basically, it was like a, you know, a really souped up uh, wooden fortress. I believe that's what it's called. Wooden fortress. I always mess up. I just want to call it a tower. But yeah, wooden fortress. It was souped up, really good defense, but it was kind of useless. I mean, it got a little bonus to wood, but it was useless compared to how great the Golden Gate was. The Kremlin wasn't nothing. And now in season four, the Kremlin is seen more than the Golden Gate because the Kremlin now has an upgrade to where you can produce militia. I may, may have a bigger influence. I don't know, but the Kremlin got an upgrade. And that's kind of a lot of civilizations. You know, the, the English Abbey, it was called the Abbey of Memes. You know, now I actually have a build order with the Abbey of Kings that like I actually enjoy. And it's actually, I've had a good game, a couple games, good games with it. You know, with, uh, let me think of another one. The Delhi. Uh, the Tower of Victory was kind of was kind of catching on a little bit, but they called it the Tower of Defeat because no one used it. It was a pro player who was kind of experimental. He used it and had a lot of success with it. A lot of players that used it pretty much always died. And oh, I thought a lot of things, you know, there's a Mongol uh, Imperial, the Cognate Palace. I don't know, but not that is viable. Like that plus the White Stupid, you actually have a choice now. Like there's a, now, you know, the trade is a little bit more of a thing now. So you got the... Uh, Damn, I'm actually bugging on the name. I know the trade landmark of the Mongols, but I'm stupid. But uh, Silver Tree, yeah, like that is viable. You know, trade itself is more viable. The Abbasid, they are, I am about to go through their changes. They are such a dynamic civ now. And I mean, who else? I mean, the HRE, the, you know, the Mongol Palace got to upgrade and it's more viable. It's just, I think, you know, everybody, I mean, the French can be just a little bit more desired. But there's also, I'm not even going into details about the season four update there's also a little small update that just came out and you know that gave a little bit of update a little bit of an upgrade to the french cool so i see french a lot more in ladder and tournaments of course i like that i was a french main and i like seeing every civilization play uh before the little update they gave to the french the french were pretty much obsolete they, they weren't nowhere which is very crazy because when the game first came out the french were like top dogs like everyone played French. It was actually like you see them too much. And then you went from not seeing them at all. And now you're kind of in that middle ground, which is the best. But uh yeah, with all these updates that came out, the biggest one I wanna actually comment on that I loved about this newest update that just dropped a small update, but something I think something very big came out of it. The AI is a lot better. Like I feel like no one's really highlighting that. The AI has like three new settings it's a uh, ridiculous something in the middle there and then absurd like there's not like six ai difficulty options and they're good practice like before i run a game on ladder i will run up some games if i know i don't have that much time because age of empire like it the games can last a long time especially on ladder if i don't have that much time i will run up a quick game with the ai on ridiculous and it will prove to be a good challenge i've gotten beat by them like if you don't play a certain way you can't get for sure beaten 
I mean, they're, they're like equivalent to like a platinum player, I feel like. They're a good, they don't do cheesy strategies. You know, if you go on a ladder, you start seeing the four Barbicans, you start seeing White Towers dropped on your head, Kremlin's dropped on you. They don't do stuff like that, but they do, they will raid your economy. They will get a big military. They will make lumber camps on wood and they'll make mining camps on gold. Like they actually are not idiots. So I will most definitely commend developers on how they're in the right direction with the AI. Very right direction. Yeah, but let's that, let's wrap it. That's wrapping up on the balances. The game, the balances, there's not really nothing. It's not a balance or a, a, a buff or a nerf in the game that is about to nuke the game. It's actually doing pretty well. And the one thing I will say, and by the way, yeah, the game does feel very balanced right now. Very balanced. I mean, look at the win rates of a lot of civilizations across the board. I think the lowest win rate, I don't know what civilization. I mean, last time I checked, I think it was the Malians. But like, it's like a 47% win rate. Like, that's pretty good. Like, it might not sound like, or like, it may sound like, you know, oh, 47, you know, that's not even. Everybody should be 50 across the board. That's asking too much. That's very unlikely to happen. Everybody be even across the board. But 47%, that means that, like, they're just a little bit on, like, you know, a negative streak. But still pretty close. You can still win with every civilization. But yes, game feels balanced. And uh, one thing I keep talking about, I mean, I'm noticing about this game, momentum feels high right now. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. You want you want to catch this momentum, okay? Like, you don't want the game to die out. Like, you just don't. Like, you don't want the game to die. You know, I'm not saying the game's going to die, but right now the momentum is high. Um, it's tournament season. You know, I mean, I don't know if that's a real thing, but like there's a lot of tournaments going on. A lot of tournaments. I mean, you got um you got a lot of independent tournaments highlighting back to the community. A lot of independent, you know, you know, basically player based funded tournaments, you know, like you got pro players throwing little tournaments, you got little here tournaments that like these little tournaments that are like, you know, maybe small cash prizes or small prize pools have like the top players playing in it. Um yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh my goodness! Uh, Rising Empires—they have like this big 2v2 tournament that a lot of pro players are playing in. That a, a person donated a lot of money to. So that's a basic community-driven tournament. You got all these. Uh, it's like a streamer tournament going on. You have uh, not a tournament, but something that is very big going on right now. The Outback Octagon uh, Two with uh, Aussie Drongo. He's a big in the community, a uh, big caster. It's a FFA tournament, uh, regicide theme this time, you know, king based with a little small, like, you know, a little extra, you know what I'm saying? A little cheesy, you know, bonuses and mods added in there that makes it, it's actually extremely entertaining. Like, I usually like don't like FFAs, so I don't really watch them that much because I really like 1v1s in this game. But like, I'm trying to open up a little more. Like, oh, okay, like these actually are, this, the game is not just 1v1. The game can be played in different ways. But anyway, yeah, I, I bet Octagon, whoever stumbled across this video, it's probably not getting nobody in there. But hey, it's actually very entertaining. Like, it's a lot going on. And also, of course, in May, you have another, uh, another S tier tournament by EGC TV called the Elite Classic Tournament. Uh, this tournament is going to be just pretty much just like, bare bone tournament but this probably it's more of a simpler tournament by egc no no you know no gimmicks nothing like that which i believe actually is pretty good i'm happy they actually go in this direction i mean this is like you know it's a only thing they really like specify with this tournament is that there are gonna be no mirrors which is pretty good considering like what happened last tournament you know who doesn't know like whoever doesn't know like you know one of the players chose the civilization every single map and people were kind of pissed it wasn't that big deal people were kind of pissed uh, no mirrors and there's no water maps. Some people don't like watching water. Uh, water in this game is still kind of shaky. Uh, I don't really mind it that much, but it is a necessity. It requires, uh, you know, you have hold of the build order and it might not be the most fun or entertaining to watch. I don't mind it that much. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I like hybrid maps. Kind of adds a more dynamic and more micro center to the game. But, you know, but yeah, tournament season high. Another thing too, uh, I want to highlight, for, especially for Momentum, a lot of players are streaming lately. A lot of pro players are streaming. Where really before, on Agent, at least AoE 4, I, I don't know if AoE 2 is pro. I think a lot of top players in AoE 2 stream. 
I believe a lot of like the big top dogs, I believe, I believe they all stream, which is something very good for AOE too. For Christmas, I had it by Age, Age of Empires 4. Everyone was very like keeping, keeping their strategies close to their chest. Like no one wanted to reveal anything. And they, a lot of people had a bunch of like, you know, uh, what is it called? Smurf accounts. And no, everyone had their like gameplay replays locked. And I get it, you know, I get they want to like, you know, they want, they got a strategy, something they want to keep it tucked and they want to bring it out in the tournaments. But it's just kind of harming the game a little bit. Like, if I had to give, like, there's nothing to do against, like, the developers, like, when it comes out of community, a lot, of, like, this game is driven by its pro players. Its pro scene drives the game. Everyone wants to be Beastie or Marine Lord or Vortex or, you know, Puppy Paw, whatever the case might be. The game is driven by pro players. So when they all are just, like, hiding everything, none of them are streaming, none of them are showing their gameplay. You don't really know. Like, they're basically MIA until a big tournament comes around. It kind of harms the game a little bit. Like, like people like seeing different perspectives, different strategies being used. They want to see it. You know, they they watch they they watch these players to get ideas and like you know I feel like players kind of sometimes overthink like how much one of their opponents is really watching their gameplay. Like I feel like these pro players think that these like these are, their opponents are literally like studying game film. Like they're like every day they just like wake up and they just like click on one of their games and just like watch how they're gonna play that exact how they're gonna play on that map and i don't think it's that serious i don't think that's really even doing much for the opponent like if your opponent like i mean yeah you could like stay on dry arabia you do the strategy of dry arabia they can't expect that if you're gonna play a different sib on that same map and then you try a similar strategy i mean anything can happen i mean you know i feel like unnecessary but now i'm starting to see a lot of players are streaming that usually don't stream or stream every now and then they're streaming on the regular uh for example like a big one honestly for the for the you know asian parts four scene is that lucifron and vortex like they never streamed like i mean you literally only saw them they both just like kind of chilled and practiced together like all day and you never saw them stream well now they're both streaming they both are streaming and they're doing like daily now and like even with like face cam and everything like Lucifer is streaming like twice a day once in English and once in Spanish every day it's pretty good pretty good uh and Puppy Paw and Vortex I said Puppy Paw and Vortex I said Puppy Paw and Wham the twin brothers that are pros like they're both streaming which is like good like you know that's very good and who else am I thinking of I think that's about it you know of course the regulars you know uh the Muslim like you know uh obviously Beastie you know, like all those players, like, you know, uh, GUA, DFP, like those guys are all going in. So we have the players that were already streaming, now streaming along players that you rarely see streaming. And it's interesting to see these, like, you know, we bored taking a doo-doo or something. You want to pull up, you know, pull up some Twitch and see a different player and see how they play. Also, yeah, 3DB too. 3DB streaming too. He's also a really fun player to watch. He never streamed before. He, he just, he, he streamed, he started doing that a couple months back. But yeah, so like I said, the momentum is high about the game. The last thing I want to mention, too, before I get to the cons. Uh, so the season, this is something that's kind of speculative, because I've seen it on Reddit, and it's actually a pretty good point. Uh, so the season, I believe it got pushed back, or it, maybe it already was, but it's easing. It's easing. It's ending in on June 15th. And a uh, little side note that's, you know, kind of gaming-centric. Uh, you know, E3... The Electronic Expo exhibit. I can't. This E something three E's. Uh, very big in the gaming community. It's like it's done. E three's dead. Uh, it was something I, when I was a little kid. I dreamed about going to it. Me and my brother, and uh, it's pretty much dead in the water. It was kind of dying before COVID. Once COVID hit, killed it. Like Xbox isn't going, PlayStation is going, no one's going. So Xbox having a showcase uh, on June 11th, and the season ends in June 15th. A lot of people, so Xbox, you know, Microsoft, they obviously are the publishers of Age of Empires 4. And people believe or speculating that uh, on the Xbox showcase, I, I've been kind of keeping up behind it. I know the Xbox showcase is going to be mainly centered around Starfield and their big games. And really, Starfield is going to be probably the biggest game they show at Xbox. But, you know, Xbox kind of. You know, they kind of got, they can actually, if they really, you know, retook it seriously, they can have RTS on lock too. 
But uh, so people are, uh, you know, saying, trying to already predict that there's gonna be new civilization shown on mm, June, June 11th ish. Like you know, during that showcase, they're probably gonna be showing, you know, maybe new campaigns, probably paid DLC this time, probably come out with some campaigns, most likely new civilizations, hopefully two. I would assume two, because I'd be like that. I'd probably put it at a solid 12. That's a pretty good number. I mean, because three that make it 13 civilizations, an odd number that feels weird to me. They could do three though. You know, kind of everybody speculating. I mean, me personally, or who I would want to see, um, at least some type of Nordic Civ, like gotta be like you know Danes or some type of Scandinavian Civ. Of course, that's gotta be in the game. And you know, me, my biggest civilization I want is of course Japanese. You know, I just really want to see how they be implemented to Age of Empires. Four, and I know they'd probably be very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot, you know, maybe some type of uh meso civ, you know, non cavalry based civ, kind of like take something out of Agent Pirates 2 book. It the, the, the possibilities are infinite. Who knows what we're gonna see, but I know if it is gonna be shown, it's gonna be a lot of drive towards that. But I could make a whole video on these civilizations all day, I could make a freaking hour long video. Let's move on to the cons, and cons basically pretty much. I'm, I'm talking for a while. I'm going to wrap this up. But basically, when I talk about cons, it's just something that I... It's more like suggestions. Like, it's like... The, I think the game's in a good spot. I mean, I really don't have any type of serious criticism. Like, I mean, it's when the game first launched, what I'm realizing, where it's at now, and I'm thinking back to how it launched, I am realizing that when the game first launched, there was a lot of problems. I mean, you could think about a lot of things. I mean... The balance was like wasn't really there because of the French and the Mongols like dominated the latter, and you know water wasn't that good because water was unbalanced. I mean there was a lot of like uh, settings like controls that just weren't the, the the hotkeys were not as mappable, and I did not realize until playing with my hotkeys customized. I'm like, dude, half the crap wasn't in the game when it first launched that is crazy i couldn't even play the same or like if i played the game how i play now went back in time i'd be screwed like some stuff i do now i'm so you know muscle memory now like it just wasn't even an option back then there's a lot of things that weren't you know on point but now they're being improved the first thing i'm going to what i feel is the biggest one of the biggest problems with the ranked ladder is that the maps now with the new recent update uh you know the small update they did change out the map pool and the map pool now is not that bad i mean excluding french pass french pass is a bad map a very bad map they they could win a lot of the maps besides french pass but okay that's one just veto it you know ban it and keep it moving all right you don't ever i think everyone has french pass bad Band. I've never played one French Pass game since I've been on the ladder. So that worked. That was a good part. But they need to bring in these custom mining maps, especially the ones that EGC TV plays. Like they got to find a way. If they want to pretty much completely mimic the map and just give it their own name, whatever. No one really cares. Just put that type of map in the game. A lot of these maps you see on EGC TV and these big tournaments, these custom maps are just magnitudes better than the maps on rank and i kind of feel like that right there is kind of like why some players are streaming a little bit more because the maps a little better a lot of these players just play custom because the custom maps are just that much better so i don't know if that makes sense that much better that was extra just say that just say it's better anyway chris has myself live but yeah um yeah maps EG custom maps need to be implemented into ranked ladder and that will take the game to very high level especially for pro players playing the rank ladder they won't you know they can actually you know play ladder and practice a little bit too but yeah um developers need to be more they need to, they need to kind of like you know update more they got to kind of build momentum like right now in the game like we just don't know what's next or when something big is playing like developers are like they kind of just stay in the shadows and they just like pop up like oh yeah we're doing this now you're like oh shit okay like there's nothing there's like not much like okay yeah we did this but in the future look forward to this this that that and this i mean honestly they don't have to tell us they don't have to tell us what the new civs are but just say 
And don't worry. Like, well, you know what I'm saying? We got some real, we got some new civilizations on the way too. And then, you know, just keep you keep everybody guessing, but just let them know. There are new, we're working on new civs. All right? Like, you don't got to give it away. You don't got to give too much information. But like, or if you don't, I even say civs. Just say we got new, we got some new, new on the way. Don't worry, something big. And people are going to be hyped. People are going to want to get back more into the game. Say, so you know, because on the game, the game right now, if you ask me right now, this is my just controversial opinion, possibly controversial. Age of Empire 2 is surpassing 4. Obviously, because Age of Empires 2 is destroying Age of Empires 4 with content. And, of course, of course it is. Because the game has been out, you know, over two decades. Of course it's going to destroy the content. But that is how, if Age of Empires 4 wants to eventually take the standard of Age of Empires game. Because the gold standard right now is Age of Empires 2. That's where most of the players are playing at. That's where all the views and tournaments are really being hosted as 2. Because two is the golden standard, and it's like it's like the default Age of Empire game. Everybody plays two. Four, it just kind of like it lost some momentum, and people kind of like forgot about four a little bit. Nah, they didn't forget, but they like, you know, we think Age of Empire is think four. Me too, excuse me. But yeah, view content in four, then you start seeing, you start seeing that player count go up. You start seeing, eventually, then Age of Empire four will be the de facto Age of Empires, where eventually, you know. Age of Empires 2, great game, but it'll kind of, hey, leave that to its nostalgic, super, you know, super big fan base. For the, but the future is for, in my opinion. That's what I believe. But, uh, yes, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, developers, you know, give up, you know, it needs to be possibly a new campaign, maybe a co-op campaign, something. Give us something to make us stay in this game so we keep playing. Uh, something real quick, uh, there needs to be a penalty for dodging. There should be a penalty for dodging. I, uh, the rank ladder, I mean, I was watching some some players, like, uh, some pro players. They, they kind of struggling with, uh, finding players of their level. Especially, like, um, when, depending on what time they play, they will play, like, you know, they might have a Conquer 3 playing, like, a Platinum 1. You know, that's been a big complaint by some players. And, uh, but a lot of these players, especially the lower, lower end players, when they run into these Conquer 3s, even though they're going to lose like one elo when they lose, they always just dodge. And kind of, I mean, I get why they're dodging because they pretty much have no chance to beat them. It's not one of those games where like, there's like a puncher's chance or you might get lucky. No, pretty much if you're not, like, Platinum 1 is like leagues below. Leagues below a Conquer 3. Like, you're pretty much going to lose. Almost 100%. All right, if they're trying, unless they're like pass on the keyboard, you're going to lose pretty much like 99.9%. It's pretty crazy how that game works. Anyway, penalty for dodging. I think everybody kind of agree on that. I mean, shit, if you dodge twice or too many times, you know, maybe you get, you know, you lose, you lose ELO in any way, or you just get, you know, timed out from playing ranked again. But yeah, uh, something I don't do not understand why it's not in the game still. I will, this is pretty big criticism. I do not understand why there's no in-game leaderboards. Like why do we have to use a third party application? Or a third party website to figure out what is the rank of this player. Like, there should be a leaderboard. And then, on top of that, click on the person's name, and you should be able to watch their, you should be able to watch their videos if they have it unlocked, their replay. If their replay is unlocked, you should be able to go to the in game leaderboard, scroll down, click that player, watch his replay if it's unlocked. Like, there's no reason for there to be no in game leaderboard. That should be a thing, day zero. Uh, another thing, uh, updated team replay UI. I mean, yeah, I know I'm pretty sure it's probably a little harder, but I mean, I, now I'm seeing, I'm starting to see it modded in the games. So now it's time for the real dogs to come in, you know. Uh, yeah, it's time to go ahead and uh, update that UI. Uh, they, I, they need to make the flags on the inside. They need to do a little better with the flags for the UI, but that's a real big nitpick, not a big deal. Um, what else we got here? Uh, I'm going to try to wrap it up. I'm going to freaking i'm just kind of go off the top but yeah i am rambling heavy um there needs to be this is something that's just kind of nitpicky but loading screen tips like why does the game have no when you're loading into a game and people maybe have bad like your know, internet taking forever why is there not like something at the bottom of the screen like something like loading screen tips like maybe just ex explaining how uh, tech is or you know or like a deli player like okay don't forget they can do this don't forget do this with the deli like 
you like just there should be there should be loading screen tips i mean a lot of games have them this is the one game i feel most definitely should have loading screen tips and uh, the biggest thing that we're in the dark on that we know is coming that uh that they haven't updated no one on no one knows when it's being released um it's just the console version of agent virus 4 the console version is like nothing i mean you know if it's not out by time you know the xbox have a showcase and i'm pretty sure they're gonna update it then but yeah just get in there i believe that console players are at disadvantage i do believe that the game is not gonna be as fluid or possibly even enjoyable on console but they have that option and some players are going to play and maybe find a way to still play and stick around you know whatever you can do to drive players into the game you want to make sure you prioritize but yeah needs to be a console release you know xbox series x just get a you know get a little you know just get that wave in you know a lot of people players probably not going to stick around i don't know how agent pirates 2 is doing on consoles but you know What else is there? What else is there? I'm trying to think. I think that's about it. Pretty much the update. Yeah, pretty much the update on how Agent Pirates 4 is doing the time. You know, I know I'm long-winded. How long have we been going now? Let's see. Let's let's click on this. We have been talking. Oh, only 36 minutes. I thought I was going for like an hour and like 15. Man, I thought I was going for like over an hour. That felt because I put up a little separate separate screen. I took a couple notes. Just so I could kind of like gather my thoughts. But like, yo. Like, that was only, I'm only at 37 minutes. But yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Uh, maybe I'll smack on some gameplay or something. Maybe I can record some new gameplay. I got a lot of gameplay saved up. Maybe I'll throw it on top of that. I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? It's just off the dome. I wasn't even playing. I just kind of clicked on this mic. Wanted to talk for a hot second to you cute people. Uh, side note, I know this channel's small. I know, I don't really promote it that well at all. Something I kind of do is a passion project, you know, just making little content here and there. I want to uh, actually got something in the works. I've been playing a lot with my brother lately. Got something I want to do. I actually going to require me to actually edit my video. That's going to suck. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, this is nice. The game's great. Very passionate about it. Best game I've played in my entire life. I've been gaming since I was, I don't even know, before I can freaking speak, feels like. And this is the most stimulating game I've played in my entire life. I've never been to a game more than this. You know, story-driven games, I've played those, but, you know, love those too, of course. But as far as a game that I've stuck with in this much hype still to this day, from day one till now, and probably future on, yeah, this game, this game trumps all. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I want players to play it. I want this game to stay alive because if a game dies, a, a part of me will die. A part of me will die. The game goes out. What am I? What am I gonna do? I go back to playing what? Like fucking Call of Duty? Ew. What Halo? That game's dead. Like what? Am I just what? What am I gonna do? I gotta go back to my what? Just being a normal person again? I'm not gonna be watching no more tournaments or anything. It's gotta just sit around and just what? Just what? Am I gonna go back? Am I gonna play like what? What else is there? What else is there? What? Am I gonna Agent Pirates 2? Go back to that dinosaur? No. I'm just kidding. Uh, let's keep it respectful to Asian Part Two players. I hurt you, I hurt you, nice fellas. Whatever you guys do, watch this, okay? But yeah, let me let me ramble. I'm rambling. Yeah, it's been Sir Neville's. You know, just chit chatting it up, house sitting. I just heard these dogs in the background and these freaking dogs just chilling. It's kind of cold in here, Jesus Christ. But yeah, it's your boy. Oh uh, yeah, man. I think that wraps it up. Au revoir.